G'day and welcome back to Siffy's Workshop. Today I've got some Nimble Ultimates and I want to put some new look here cleats on the bottom of them. So brand new shoes uh, using the 3-bolt system um, as you can see there. And so I've got a few different things I'm going to have to look at. So I've got the Nimble um, particular screws and these shoes are a bit different because the stack so so small on the sole. Um, sometimes you can't use regular bolts. So these Nimble screws, they're, they're about... Uh, yeah, the 7.7 millimeters and yeah so that's what those ones are and then your conventional this is like the new style look here one so just like the hex head look here screw and you know just just eyeballing them they're roughly nine millimeters in terms of just the thread section so not including the heads that's just the section that would um, slide into the shoe and for your calculation, you're also going to need to know how thick your washers are. So this is a standard, um, again, the new, newer style look uh, Kia washer. And those ones, you know, again, eyeballing about 1.70 millimetres. And then the Kia, the cleat itself. So the actual, where the washer sits, um, thickness. And it kind of varies a little bit as far as I can tell. Um, depending on which hole you're looking at, but I just measure the lowest, so that way you work out your um, maximum possible length of screw, and that works out to be about 2.26 millimeters, I reckon, or thereabouts. And then from there, sometimes the cleat screws on these shoes are a little bit raised, so. The threads aren't completely flush with the with the sole, and if they're really high, um, you know, in this case above 2.26 millimeters, which is pretty unlikely, um, you'll find it's not possible to actually torque the cleat down with that bolt. Um, so you have to work out something else there. So, the, the you know the highest raised thread section on, on the left shoe is about 0 0.4 millimeters on mine, and on the right shoe again, just double checking. Just looking for the highest one, so that um, that inner one there for the right shoe. You know, just ballpark yeah, about zero point three millimeters. So both below, you know, the zero point uh, the two point two six. which means that it is possible to use these shoes. Bingo, bango, there we go. Less than 2.26, that means the shoes are a goer. And then the next thing we need to look at is how deep the, the shallowest um, thread is. So some of, the, some of the threads might be a little bit thicker than other ones, or deeper rather, and that'll mean you can use, you know, potentially use longer screws uh, in the case of this, the, the left shoe, uh, the deepest section is 4.74 millimeters, roughly, um, before it starts pushing into your, before it starts pushing into the sole and into your foot. And there might be something you never notice. So um, it's not necessarily a reason not to use the standard bolts. However, um, you know, ideally you wouldn't have uh, threads pushing into the bottom of your feet. And in the case of the right ones, so slightly, slightly thinner sole or slightly thinner threads. Uh, measuring that as 4.72 millimeters, just 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 roughly. And so you know, 1.70 plus 2.26. So that's 1.7 from your uh, Kia washer, 2.26 from your cleat thickness, and you're always round down. So that's going to be 3.9 millimeters for that one. And then from there, the measurement you need to look at is, so your 3.9 in the case of these particular cleats, plus the maximum thickness you find, or the minute maximum minimum thickness you find in your uh, cleat threads, which for me is you know roughly 4.7 because you always want to round down. Uh, that way you, you don't risk you know rounding up and, and having anything a little bit too long. And what that indicates to me is that the longest possible bolt. Uh, 
that we can use is going to be 8.6 millimetres approximately. And so what that means is I can't use the Kiyo screws because they're 0.4 mil too long, but I can use the nipple screws, which is 7.7, .7, which is below 8.6, so, so that's great. Now in terms of actually fitting the cleats, I always use a little bit of grease on the, uh, the threads of the shoe. I think that's really important. Just minimizes you know, the risk of cross-threading. You know, when you've got these you know, really, really nice shoes, you really want to minimize um, any potential damage of you know, cross-threading. And, and the grease seems to be a good way to mitigate that. So I'm just, you know, just applying a small amount of, um, this is just you know, waterproof assembly grease you know, for, for bicycles, nothing particularly special about it. Um, not a silicon based one because sometimes that can interfere with carbon composite structures. There you go, line your cleat up. So, whenever I get a new pair of shoes, um, always get new cleats for one. And new screws that usually come with the cleats, but in this case, obviously, you're gonna to have to get the slightly different ones. And I'll always set the cleat as far back as possible, just central, um, and then adjust from there, sort of retailer it because it doesn't. There isn't necessarily any guarantee that you're gonna get the cleat bolts right in the center, like when they when they you know manufacture the shoe. And these are these are handmade shoes, so you know there's always you know potential for a little bit of manufacturing tolerance, as you're seeing here. In the measurements, you know, there is slight differences between the left and the right shoe. So we'll set them in like a generic position, which is all the way back and in the middle, and then readjust from there as, as required or as your fitter recommends. You can see all the way back, line up right, roughly in the middle. And I don't, I used to try to like line up, you know, the shoe in my hands and try to guess where the clear was going to be, but the best way is just to try it on the bike and make sure the cleats aren't pushing you around, you know, you let, lets you move in your sort of natural way. It's not, you know, pushing your ankles or your knees in a way that's uncomfortable. And I'm just gonna nip them up with a screwdriver. And I normally just do them firm with cleat bolts. Um, it's harder to over torque them with a, with a Phillips head driver, just kind of handy, but you know, with a Allen key, Allen key, like a formula Allen key, you can put a heap of torque on them. So you just wanna be careful if you're using that style, style screw. And then um, if your cleats slip, you know, when you when you first try clipping in and out a couple of times, then you know you've got to do it a bit tighter, is, is my rule of thumb. So, yeah, that's that's how I fit cleats to nimble shoes. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully this helps you with your use of nimble shoes. They, they seem like a good product. I'm keen to give people to the test on the track this week and give them a burn. Thanks, heaps.